I would like to remind everyone that this show is brought to you by the Dolphin Wars. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to King Dolphin TV, uh, the Wednesday edition. I am Raymond, and I am the author of the Dolphin Water series of books and ruler of the greatest pod on YouTube. I hope you are all well tonight and enjoying this first day of spring and... Um, and uh, looking forward to another fun evening of King Dolphin TV. Um, looks like we've got people coming in. And we will welcome everybody. If... Something here. Uh, thank you, La Goddess. But uh, evidently, I couldn't find... I couldn't find it. So we'll have to try again later. Um, so... If, before I get started, if you like, if you like uh, what we're doing here, please like and subscribe to this great community. And also, if you know people that you think would be great to, for me to interview, please uh, give me a way to reach out to them. And uh, I will set them up for interviews. Right now, I only have one interview for um, for uh, April. We could be seeing a lot of uh, Fantastic Four interviews. Or maybe uh, Bill and I could uh, set up something for later on in the month. But we'll see. We'll see how this goes. So, and also, um, if you want to continue feeding Pudgy and Snort and, uh, and um, help out with the channel, as soon as I get the, um, as soon as I get the uh, tip stream, Hit past the uh, silly uh, part. What? There. Oh, there it goes. All right. There. If you want to send a couple ducats into the buckets uh, and keep a snort in, in walrus and pudgy and cookies. Um, I have pinned the tip jar, the tip string onto the top of the chat. All right, so let's see. We will get started, and I would like to um again thank Sandra for taking over for me on Saturday. That was an exhausting trip home. Um, it was a four. It was a 13 to 14 hour day uh, before I even got home. So thank you very much again, honey. Love you. All right. So let me welcome everybody who is here right now. First off, we got our esteemed guests in the chat. We've got, we have Sci-Fi Mommy. Hello there, dear. How are you? And I'm glad you're here. We've got uh, Matt G, alias uh, Taylor Swift is greater than Disney, etc., etc. Even though I do not like Taylor Swift. Um, and now my amazing, uh, 
amazing wrenches, the people that keep chaos in, that brings chaos out of order. So, yes. And, uh, yes, people are coming in. Great. Uh, all right. We've got, starting off with my amazing producer, the aforementioned Sandra. Love you, honey. Again, you keep up. Chaos out of order. We have uh, John Rendell. We have John Rendell here, the co co host for, for Saturday Night's Just Kids. Uh, we have the wonderful and talented uh, anti derivative Jill. Go to her channel, and she says, all right, we're going to have to talk about DS9 time travel. We'll have to work on the date. I need to think about it. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's drive uh, Captain Finity crazy by talking about time travel. Um, and then we, of course, have the first in, the last out. Look at her legion on. How you doing, troublemaker? Oh, did I say that? Yeah, um, I couldn't find... The uh, I couldn't find that that link that route thing, so we'll have to try and figure something out. All right, and then we've got the comic relief crusader. We have the comic relief crusader. Hello, buddy. We gotta talk about the big project. That's um, and we have FKHC. 2005. All right. And now, of course, how could we not me mention this guy? He's the last. He's the last, but he is the greatest. The hardest working bear on the internet. And just ask him, but make sure you ask him nicely because he will probably give you such a bear hog. Oh, such a biggie, squeezy bear hug. And you may not survive that biggie, squeezy hit bear hug. So, let us introduce himself. Himself. Start up, boopas! You bird. Dot scream. Hashtag roar. <laughs> Let's talk FF, buddy. Let's talk FF. Great show tonight. All right. So, yes. Snorna poopers dot scream. Hashtag roar. All right. So. John Randall says, uh, John Randall says, oh, thank you, King Dolphin TV, the hardest working man on the internet, me. Well, I'd like to think so. All right. Uh, let's go through some of the introduction comments. Snort says, hello, humans, another critters. Okay. And he says, Excalibur. Actually, I thought Stan Lee quoted Excelsior. And hello, Sci-Fi Mambi. Okay. And then we're trying to get rid of that stupid heart at the bottom of the chat. All right. Hello, Matt Jane. Nope, couldn't find it. Ha! Mort says, maybe could maybe Sandra could recommend a good surgeon to remove the heart. If I only had a heart. But is that more a Wendy's specialty? And Snort says I can do it with my ice cream scooper. Jill's lick. Jill is listening and cooking dinner. Pork chops and potatoes. Well, for those that like pork chops and potatoes, you can grab the dolphin van and run down to where Jill is. 
Okay. The goddess asks, um, if Raymond is Reed Richards, Dandra is Sue Storm, does that make Pudgy Johnny Storm and Snort the Thing? Ooh, that is a... Uh, Marvel, here's the cast. Sandra is married to Raymond and wants to be invisible most just because it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Coco for Coco hosting. All right. All right. And so, uh, John says, pork chop party at Joe's house. Hope you made enough. You don't have to worry about me, but hope you made it out. All right. So what we're going to do tonight, as you know, we've started this previously. Um, I am I am reviewing the Fantastic Four, and I am using the 44 years of Fantastic Four which includes every issue through December 2004 and over 550 comics, printable comics, cover to cover, up to 20,000 pages, plus all the annual issues. And you got to love that picture. Oh, you just got to love that George Perez story. That is totally awesome. Got the four, and then got all supporting characters in the back. Awesome. So we, I've been doing this, and people tend to like it. And so we have done so far the first four issues of the Fantastic Marvel first family, and also the the annual. Uh, the Wedding of Reed and Sue Richards. So tonight, we're, we're going, time permitting, we're going to do, because I thought, I looked at it, and I thought about it, and I think these two can almost be a two-parter um, because they're just so close together. And... Um, and we're going to, so we're going to do issues number five and six time permitting. And how are we doing this is we're doing it, uh, um, I'll go through the episode, or I'll go through the pages. We'll, I'll talk about them. If you guys got comments and uh, about it, please uh, feel free to put them in the chat. When we get to a commercial break, I will. Uh, I will uh, put them out there, and we'll talk about them. The good thing about these these uh, issues is they come up with the old school ads, which I think is really cool. And I think we have a lot of fun when we uh, when we talk about the amazing ads. They're almost as cool as the comic book itself. So, without further ado. We shall start. Okay. Let's see, sorry. All right. <laughs> Legata says we want to see some ads for those sea monkeys. Maybe we will get the sea monkeys. But right now, Fantastic Four, number five. Da, da, da. Meet Dr. Doom. That is a cool splash page. He says, with the turn of this dial, I'll destroy the four of you forever. And he's suffocating them. And of course, Sue is uh, tied up on the other side of the room. All right, so here we go. Oh, and there you can get your coins. 
almost $10,000 for these old and new coins. So here we go. Dr. Doom, old school. He's over there saying that they are pawns in his hands. I love that vulture. And look at all the magic books. We've got demons, science, and sorcery. So it's, uh, he is um, ready to uh, cause mayhem with the Fantastic Four. He's got a he's got a cool helicopter, and of course, Mister Braggy. He says only I have the power to defeat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now they're at the now you've got New York, you've got the lights, you've got the Baxter Building. Johnny is reading a comic book with the Hulk, um, and he's over there saying that. He's over there getting into one of his usual fights with Ben. And uh, and so Ben takes the comic away and Johnny sets it on fire. Ben's ready to break the table. And Reed has to restrain Ben again. and But this time Sue... Uh, uses a fire extinguisher. And Reed says, what's the matter with the four of us? We're, we're never, we're not fighting against some menace from mankind. We end up fighting among ourselves. So, yeah, he's got to be the father figure. And then the lights go out. And there's a helicopter out there tying up a, the Baxter building with a super net. He says, nothing can escape my little web, not even the Fantastic Four. Oh, no. So, they've got the net. I love the shark teeth on Doom's helicopter. With the eyes. Eyes and shark teeth. I never noticed that before. And then, uh, now he introduces himself. He... He says he's Dr. Doom. And Reed automatically gets recognition. He remembers the college days about uh, Victor Von Doom, who loved sci uh, sorcery as long as he was doing um, brilliant, brilliant uh, science, but he wants to go to the netherworld. And it causes... Uh, an explosion. And here we have the first use of the evil genius. Fat, where are you? And the explosion that disfigured his face, he gets expelled, and he goes to Tibet. And now Reed is just, Reed is a little worried about this one saying this could be the prelude of our most dangerous adventure. And now Dr. Doom is saying, is ordering, is ordering them first to send Sue out uh, so she could be a hostage so that the other three can do his bidding. And Ben is over there trying to use the, trying to escape and he gets zapped. And even though Ben blusters about uh, trying to get him, trying to get bait him down there, um, Stu actually decides she's going to go up there. Um, and, uh, and of course, Reed is saying, there may be more than the four of us at stake. But I swear he will not harm you, not while we live. And so he sends the flare up. She comes up the net. And uh, you can tell she's feisty. She's over there going, yeah, I'm going to be your hostage. And then thinks, you shall live to regret to find the Fantastic Four. But man, she can be a badass. Even in back in those days. All right. We're going to take our first commercial break. We've got... Uh, 
the Fantastic Four fan page. And I'm going to read one of these writers. Roy Thomas. Oh, that's a familiar name. He says, Dear Editor, Fantastic Four 3 was excellent. The feud angle made it all the better, though, Expect particularly the ending. The continuity in FF is all that could probably be asked. I'm just subscribed to FF for two years. I hope it runs much, much longer than that. Roy Thomas, I wonder if it's the same. Okay, now you can go, you can go collect bugs for only a dollar. Look at you get cool in that little. And that jar says killing junk. If that will safely dispose of the insect without harming the body. Magnifying glass forceps only for a dollar. I bought my granddaughter a a science advent calendar, and it cost me twenty five bucks. How much? Man, how prices have changed! And then you've got your basic wrist radio. Plays for years. Wear it like a watch. Listen like a radio. Plays for years without electricity or batteries, and you can get a broadcast up to fifty miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got to be some antenna to get it. All right, so first commercial. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, Legatus wants to see the ads for the sea monkeys. Hi there, maker of happy snacks and delightful, delicious delicacies that make happy tummies happy. Hey, right, come on, we gotta talk about the comic here. Uh, sea monkey C, sea monkey two. <laughs> And Snort says, or Legatus, or John says, I am not cleaning up sea monkey doo doo. I have not, I have not seen any of the sea monkeys yet. Doctor of Pharaohiquinology with a minor in herpetology. Okay. Insect collecting. Been doing that since I've lived in the country. Lots of bugs in my door. Luckily, the kitty table is closed up here. All right, so let us continue. All right. All right, so they are using the helicopter, and now he's revealing his plan. Don't you love it when villains monologue? Okay, he says... First, I want you all to board the airplane, and you must swear you will not attack me. And uh, and Ben is going to Ben is going to shoot the flame or the flare, and Johnny's saying is worried that they may kill be killed. And Reed says, "No, this is there's something more to this." So and Doom, as it, it's as if Doom reads uh, Mister Fantastic's mind, saying he could not resist. And then the uh, and then he brings up the the others. Love that, love that shark teeth. And he heads out. He goes back to his castle and leave it to Doom to make him a uh, melodramatic castle we don't even know where it's at yet all right so they get in there reads reads uh ready to take on or ben's ready to take on doom sue's tied up and johnny is saying we promise not to attack let's hear him out and there's that big old tiger and and doom is over there saying that his tiger can attack the three of them i'm like yeah, right. I think Ben would make mincemeat out of that tiger. So he's going to... He explains that he's got a time travel device. Uh-huh. Ben and he were, I yeah. He Doom invented a time ta travel device, and he wants to go send the three to get the treasure of Blackbeard. And... Um, 
So they're over there saying, you know, why don't he go? Or, and, but Dune's got to operate the machine. So the three of them, the three of them talk, and Ben's the, uh, the gadfly, says, what if he doesn't bring him back? Um, Doom, Doom says he's going to keep, he'll probably keep his word, and, and Doom says he will let Sue go. And then he sends them. And they, there's a plate that's under them, and the time travel machine just uh, causes them to vanish. And then they end up in the past. Love this artwork with the of the pot. I, I love the artwork anyway, but just looking at the old pirates, how scuzzy they look. And. Doom, or the three of them, they've only got 48 hours. And so they go and get some clothes. Um, of course, Ben decides he's going to be play the monster and scare them away. And uh, so they get their clothes. And uh, Johnny likes it, and... Uh, Ben, uh, ben gets uh, dressed, and he's got a beard. He's got an eye patch, and Ben likes it. So Ben is really getting to, into the part. Ahoy, matey. Let's see if we can date one of these parody barmaids. <laughs> and uh, they've still got a f- raids keeping them in focus, telling them they got to find black beard and a way to get... Um, their treasure. Uh, these three bozo, or these two bozos and pretty lady, are going to um, press gang the three of them. And and of course they are drunk. It's drunk, and the three of them are knocked out. So now they're going to be part of the crew. And there, you can earn big money being an auto mechanic. Just go to Commercial Trades Institute, Chicago, Illinois. Learn how to fix, and you get your own tools and tune-up kit. Isn't that something? All right. So that's uh, let's see here. Uh, Legata says. Is Dr. Doom a real doctor having a PhD, or does it sound sinister? You know, I may I may uh, jump a bit and go and review the books of Doom, telling the entire history of Doc Doom. We'll see. It's, it's never really mentioned in the in the FF continuity, but uh, it's um there is um uh, there is a mini a graphic novel that does kind of explain Doom's history from his point of view, who knows if it's true or not. Uh Doctor of Pharaohquinology with a minor in herpetology. Okay. He says crystal radio and a watch, nifty. And the Wrist radio can also hear spies talk to each other. <laughs> Bugs in the door and bats in the belfry. Do I have a pick for the kitty table door? Why, yes, but I'll be there. Hello, Phantom Outsider. How you doing, buddy? All right. Look. Okay. Come on. I want comments on what we're doing here. Okay. Make make b- big money as an auto mechanic as long as there's no computers in- involved. <laughs> Wasn't the real black bear a disguised polar bear? Hmm. That's true. 
Need to update these ads. Get your own YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, ah, I like that. Dr. Doom never graduated college, but as the ruler of Latveria, he gave himself degrees from Latveria University. Hey, that's a, that's a way to explain it. L.U. Oh, of the Doombots. All right. Okay. Now we continue. All right. Oh, they're knocked out. They're in the pirate ship. Then you got Ben. You know what? I just realized. He's got brown eyes. He's been, he's been lying to us all the time. The thing has brown eyes. He is not the ever-loving blue-eyed thing. Ooh, I'm going to write to Marvel. He's the first one to come up and discover they're in the... Sh in the pirate ship. And now they are. And of course the pirates are arguing about themselves. Trying to get the uh, the crew to work. Uh, Waking the prisoners. Put them to work. Move you swabbies. Since when do you give orders here? Arr, Mr. Spliny. I'm as fit to command as any. And then. Just then. Bet, uh, the thing comes and. And uh, comes out of the hole and starts uh, beating up the crew. And uh, Ben says, you know, Johnny, I feel sorry for those pirates. There's only a dozen of them against the thing. And Johnny, Johnny uh, is cheering Ben on. Something falls. Reed decides to bop the sailor. And... And uh, they use Johnny melts a sword, and uh, the creature, the the crews decide. The crew decide to back away from the three of them, and then they're attacked. There's another pirate ship, and Reed says, "Oh, there's treasure," and he tells them to get ready to fight. And he says, Ben gets his pirate crew going and to fight. And you can get a thousand one three things that you can get for free. Yeah, right. Only for a dollar. And then amazing Chesto Bank. You could put in a coin, close the drawer, and it's gone. Ooh. Only a nine a buck ninety-eight. All right. So so the uh, so the torch goes to take on the other pirates and causes steam. Reed um, Reed decides to be the plank so they can board the crew. Um, and Ben and Ben and his crew. Head on over and they start battling the other pirate crew. And they cheer. They say, Hooray for the mighty bearded one! Hooray for Blackbeard! Hail Blackbird! So Ben is Blackbeard. So I evidently the uh, evidently he caused a paradox and he is now Blackbeard. So, and then he is, he, um, uh, Reed empties it, gives it to the men, puts chains into the, into the, uh, into the chest. He, uh, he, uh, they did arrange that they were only getting the ch chest, um, not the treasure. Ben now decides he's going to stay because he likes being a bland, uh, a pirate. He's uh, he's saying, I'm the leader of men. I'm somebody. I'm the guy who started the legend of Blackbeard. 
The kids will read about me in school this someday. I ain't ne- giving this up, never. In the 20th century, I'm nothing but a monster. Freak. And then he ties Johnny and Ben. Um, and unfortunately, being knowing the Fantastic Four, he knows how they can restrain him. And they are dumped. They're 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 dumped in a lifeboat, and they start on their way. But then a tornado decides to uh, hit them, and uh, and they're knocked off the ship, and. They're knocked off the ship and taught, uh, put to an island. Um, ben apologizes and uh, says he lost his head. The chest was washed ash- ashore, and then now it's the time. Now it's time for them to come back, and we will take another break. You could sell grit. If- I wonder what grit actually was. I never read grit. And then, the giant 10-foot inflatable boa constrictor. You too can be squeezed by a rubber boa. For two ninety eight. Wonder what you would get that at the... Uh, wonder what that would be called over on uh, Party City. All right. Okay, L U home of the Doombots. Okay, any comments of the ne- of the latest one? The fact that uh, Ben just became Blackbeard the pirate. John says pirate guy has better beard than me. Now I'm sad. Yo ho ho, and a bottle of Diet Coke. Arr. We need to bring back. We need to bring back Pirate Day on one on one of our themes. Um, Sandra says, but his is a pretend beard. And Ben is wearing contacts as part of his disguise. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Those definitely look brown, brown eyes to me. That reminds me, I must find piggy bank made by great great grandfather. It's big pig shaped, and we always called it Uncle Sherman. Oh, okay. By the way, William Teach, aka Blackbeard, had blue eyes. Well, if they would have drawn it right, um, um, Ben Grimm is known, or the thing is known as the ever loving blue eyed idol of millions. So they should have drawn blue eyes. Arr, a great pirate. A $3 giant 10-foot snake. Yeah. Stort will squeeze you for free. John says, Grit was a newspaper magazine that used to come on the weekends with coupons and sales and some local articles. Don't make me bring out my blunderbuss. And blunderbuss is better than Eevee bus. Okay. But back we go. Actually, let's... uh, uh, I think this would be a cool way to do. Yeah, we got to do the fifteen second one because I got uh, I got copyright bait back. Yeah. All right, so we continue. Now on sale, the Incredible Hulk, the the strangest man of all time. Need we say more? 
All right, and there's your cool, cool stamps and cool things that you can get. Four live chameleons for a buck. Just make sure they put holes in the box. Indian war bonnet kit. Of course, they can't say that anymore. Um, insignia, Army, Navy, Marine, $44. All right. And there's the square coming down and brings them back to the present. And Doom, Doom is gloating. Ah, my three emissaries, you have returned as I knew you would. And Reed is saying, there's the chest. And he's saying they were originally the property of Merlin. To make their power invincible. Notice he's smiling. I wonder how that mask uh, can smile. And uh, and Johnny is telling, what if the su Submariner finds those gems? And Reed says, oh, I hope not. And then he sees the, uh, the chains thing... They clobbers, and it's a robot. And Doom comes out and says he's going to drain their oxygen. So, so now he's going to suffocate the three. But Sue becomes invisible and uh, short circuits. The uh, the instrument panel, stunning doom. She she heads to the others. I tell you, Sue is a badass. She may not have force fields as of yet, but she is still a badass. Um, just about as they're ready to uh, re ready to pass out, Sue activates the. Uh, the door and they come up. Ben wants to take the place apart. Reed is saying, let's get, Reed is essentially saying, let's get out of here. Um, and they break out of the castle and um, they, um, Johnny decides. Johnny decides to. I. I don't know the science of it, but he gives the. He makes it atomic heat, and. And well, yeah, he boils the water away and turns the ground into glass, so he becomes a living. Uh, a bomb, and turns it into glass, and. They escape. And and Johnny puts flame around the castle, and uh, Doom is ready to do one of his many escapes. Leaves with his rock, his patented, uh, patented rocket pack TMTM, and uh, he heads out. Johnny's gonna try and rest, uh, capture him, but. Uh, Doom's rockets are just too powerful for Johnny. Johnny's getting ready to fall. And they um, they rescue Johnny, and, and now they're worried. Johnny says, first Submariner, now Dr. Doom, loose on Earth. What happens next? Johnny uh, Reed says, we're going to devote our lives to tracking them and down. And Ben, of course, is saying, we'll do it my way. My way. All right. And that is the end. We got Tiki Gods for 59 cents. Tiki God collection. Yes. And then reversible auto seat covers for $2.98. Man, people, things work. And then more cool stuff, a treasure chest of fun. 
You can get a bike wind, windshield, transistor radio kit, an atomic smoke bomb, silent dog whistle. I didn't think those worked. I didn't think those worked at all. And then you can get a fishing kit. So that is issue six of the Fantastic Four. Um, let's uh, let's uh, go through the comments here. Do, 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 do. Let's see. John, yes, it's Fett's work. He had a longer one, but I got copyright bit. <laughs> Where are the live mini polar bear ads? I don't know. Merv Griffin. John said I had a box of obsolete military. Um, obsolete military and sitting as a kid. Friend of dad's had them and gave them to me. Cool. An air rifle. You will shoot your eye out. Huh? Imagine if they were all one stretchy, rocky, invisible, flaming human. Hmm. Be careful what you ask for, John. And there's Pudgy Hedgehog. Uh, Pudgy Waves, busy doing Friendship Town stuff, lurking and listening. Wow, Tiki God, 59 cents. Those Tiki Gods work cheap. Uh, so he goes, you mean boom? Pudgy hugs everybody. Yes, and a hug for you, Pudgy. Go to Pudgy Hedgehog Adventures. Reed was way into Frank Sinatra at the time. He was always doing things my way. An atomic smoke bomb. Does the NRC know about this? Legatus asks, considering how often Doom makes an escape, has the FF ever made pl plans to counter him escaping? We shall not. We shall see. We shall see. All right. So now we're going to do. We've got time. We can do it. Phantom Outsider says, you can't turn water to glass. Sand, yes. Water, no. Yep. But he, but he, burnt, off the, he burnt off the water. So he could turn the uh, the the bottom into glass. All right. So let us let us go to <laughs> yeah. They're usually pretty glad to see him go. Yep. Well, it was like when we were talking to um we were talking. Probably back in the day, um, we I asked I I asked who is the who is the worst FF villain not named Doom. We'll have to go back and see. We'll have to do a poll because um, you know Doom is. The number one. All right. But right, so um <laughs> So why didn't the other what? Uh, water? Russian? The Gata says after this issue, was the FF wanted for piracy since they were pirates? Mm -hmm. If he heated the water that much, that moat would have been gator soup. Mm, I'm not. Snort, do you eat gator soup? All right. Issue number 
five, issue number six of the Fantastic Four. Can anybody guess who's the villains? Oh, I gave it away. Well, anybody? Snort said, I've had Gator Tail. Interesting, but never had it again. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> Batman and Tom. Hello, Darth. How you doing, buddy? Uh, well... You would be halfway. Because you have have the Fantastic Four at last met their match when Mighty Submariner and Evil Doctor Doom team up. Don't miss. The diabolical duo join forces. Da, da, da. You get you not only get one badass, you get two badasses. Fantastic Four is probably going to have their hands full. And the magic art reproducer. Draw the first day. No lessons, no talent, even if you can't draw a straight line. You too can. Oh, how did they get away with this? Free. How to easily draw artist models. Oh my goodness. How did they get away with that? Uh, with the comics code back in 1962. Wow. All right. So we start out with uh, it's called Captives of the Deadly Duo. So. Fanta uh, John Johnny's heading toward the Fantastic Four headquarters, and they're saying, calling him the Torch, a, ne a living legend. Never thought he'd see him. Thinking it's a ma uh, natural phenomenon, and one guy's saying he's seen him in action before with his three partners. Uh, one guy is saying, I can't believe in the Fantastic Four, mass hysteria, and saying that creatures of the imagination, of course, Sue just ran by, whispering, uh, and she pops up and starts and, and heads out to the building. Um, Torch has been looking for Dr. Doom. They go to the back. She goes to the Baxter building. The elevator does not work. The express elevator doesn't work. He wants to deliver a telegram. Uh, and she's asking if he's delivering any messages. She's using the, the first appearance of the hidden belt buckle. Activating the electric eye, and uh, she heads on up. And the second view, the second schematics of the Baxter Building. Got the you got the flying bathtub, you got a map room, you got their living quarters, trophy room, laboratories. Uh, an ICBM. So cool stuff. Cool stuff. So um, she gets to the recreation room and uh, no luck on no luck on finding the Dr. Doom, and, th and then they're reading mail, and 
Rig decides to make a little hot a little boy in the hospital have a great day. So he stretches over and visits the and visits the little boy and answers all sorts of questions. And he explains the the origin of the costumes. And then of course Johnny decides to um, Johnny decides to harass Ben by with the Yancey Street Gang, and Johnny uh, says they're gonna knock the chip off the shoulder. So Ben bends a chunk of titanium steel and. Uh, is going to mail that to them. And Ben wants to fight. He wants either Doc Doom or Submariner. Sue thinks uh, Doom is the pure of evil. Submariner is just a bitter old man. And then... Out in the water. Oh, dolphins! Swimming with a porpoise. Da -da. And, uh, and in the middle of it is the submariner. He is uh, having fun with dolphins. Dolphins are cool. Swimming with a porpoise. Da -da. All right. And now... We see Doom flying over in an air, this time a jet plane. He tries to get a Namor's attention, and he goes under water, and then comes back up. And then he goes, hmm, who is this? Doom says he's going to come in peace. And uh, he's saying, he's saying uh, he wants to defeat the Fantastic Four. And and of course, show me the puny mortal that does not tremble at the name of Doctor Doom. And here you can build your own air conditioner from CTI, a sub probably a subsidiary of Acme. Make money as you train. Yeah, right. So now they're going underwater. Um, his, his flying sub follows the Submariner, and they go to the ruins of a city. Um, he's got he's got a villa. And he's, oh man, he knows how to live. The Submariner. He's got his own cool chair. And uh, he's over there saying, Doom is saying, You took a holiday. And Namor's, or Namor's saying, Nah, I'm just, they're fools. And then he shows the picture. He sees a picture of Sue. And he's saying none of her concern. And Doom is saying it's going to be a diabolical duel. And he recall he recalls the destruction of the underwater city by an H bomb test. And he's start. She's over there. He's over there. Judge uh, tugging at Namor's heartstrings, weighing uh, the weighing the loss of his people. And uh, he he finally relents, 
and decides to go after the Fantastic Four. He uh, uses something called a grabber, which uh, picks up, uh, attaches to a idol, and it brings it back to effortlessly back to the headquarters. So he's using magnetic power, and he's going to put it into Namor's belt buckle to hide it, and and he's going to assemble it, and And the power will be released. And there he goes. Comes out like a like a missile. He's about ready to clobber into an airplane, but he can he heads on. He heads on. And the pilot says, I'm not gonna write this in our logbook. Nobody would believe us. And then He heads over to New York City. And he just, he just walks over so regally. He doesn't look so tough to me. Yeah, right. I'm sure he would be, he would be the first one to get tossed into the water. And they're ready to, they're wondering if he wants a showdown. And he walks, do, 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 do. and then at the uh, meanwhile at the headquarters, Johnny sees something. But what does he see? We will find out after you find out about the new Dynaflex method, where you can get a He-Man muscle body and have or girls, girls. Uh, Going ooh and ah, and you hit you too can have a name called Mike Marvel. All right. So let's see. Let's see here. Phantom says, the trap, there are two villains. Bob and George, Abbott and Costello, Bert and Ernie. And hello, Darth. Hello, Team Legatus, John, Sandra. All right, Bert and Ernie, the two villains. <laughs> I like this one. Statler and Waldorf. Yeah, they're... Put, put Waldorf in the mask. John says, oh, yes, Mama, buy me that. Uh, let's see, Kirby... Uh, no, I think it only goes to the lowest floor, and then they have a separate elevator, Sandra. Uh, <laughs> the flying bathtub. The little boy asked him to hit a home run for him. He probably could. Which, which one is Raymond? Huh? I'll never tell. Swimming with is King Dolphin Namor? I'll never tell. The Submariner. I thought it was Seaman. Is Sue invisible in that picture? Which one? Comic Relief Crusader says, I always liked how Namor's head was shaped kind of like a box. And H bomb. It made his city go. I think one is enough. Flat top. You know, I wonder if Gene Roddenberry read Fantastic Four or the old uh, Submariner comics. Because uh, uh, Spock sure looks like Namor. 
uh, kind of like Frankenstein with Paul Stanley's eyebrows. Did Namor ever fight the Hulk? Hulk smashed. Uh, I don't know. I think they were kind of uh, on again, off again allies. Well, we'll get Sandra's uh, opinion on this. She's the flight instructor. Uh, wait, isn't not logging almost hitting a guy with your plane an FAA violation? Sandra, put something out there with that. What you think? New York City, get a rope. Can he see something? Let me guess, a goyle. John says, I used to look like that. Then I woke up. Yes, I, I yes, Darth, they are out there. Right over his head. Yes, many, many times. Only if you have your transponder on. All right. Okay. So let us uh, continue now that we've seen Muscle Guy. John is look. Johnny was looking at you know, peak, playing Peeping Tom in the library. Sue, Sue said, Sue's asks him, and there's a picture of Namor, and she's over there saying, "It's, it's mine. Give it to me." And uh, and he's ready to tear the picture. Sue turns invisible, and. Johnny still has it away, and he burns the picture. Um, Reed says, what's going on? Johnny says he's burnt the submariner. Sue says it was her property. And, and Reed is over there, kind of hurt probably, and saying that the uh, um uh, she she can't explain what's going on and uh she's she's getting feelings for him and there is and there is submarina you know for being the headquarters of the bestest team ever they sure have lousy, lousy security and then raids holding back ben again and who wants to beat him up? And uh, um, Namor is saying his mission is one of peace. Um, Johnny goes around. Um, Submarine Manor doesn't fear him, is telling Sue to step away. Who did the inking on this? This is different than the other. We'll have to go back. I'll have to go back and see who inked this. This is different ink. Uh, they, ben and name or Johnny and name or um, start going after it. Um, Johnny cuts away the floor. But Ben, uh, but Namor is flying in the air, and his fi fire goes out. So Reed is asking again, and he's saying that he's offering peace. And of course, Reed and Ben don't trust him, and they they would be right. They would be right, and then they are going to check their security system. All right. 
There's the boa constrictor again and the magic chest. And there is all the all the security cameras, everything clear. Raid thinks there is he's up to some shenanigans. And uh and Namor is ready to take Sue on a trip to the city. Next thing you know, you've got a you've got the Baxter Building going up up in the air. And uh, and heading up in the air and. They say, this is your stowing submariner. You can stop this. Yeah, I can't, you fools. I planted the trap. Trap, but it's been triggered by Dr. Doom. And there you see it flying over Manhattan. And, and uh, of course, Dr. Doom double-crossed him, too. And you could see the, uh, the jet with attracting the magnetic grabber. And so they think getting the airplane, but then uh, now, now they're at the point where the air is getting thin. So there they go. Of course, Doc Doom is in a Dr. Doom is in a sealed off spaceship. Um, they they can keep a little bit, bit of air. Dr. Doom is, is saying, I've managed to snare the only beings capable of act, blocking my ambition to rule the world. Some manner never guessed he's included in that group. And now he is helpless as the rest of them. Uh, their, their pogo plane is damaged. Um, they pull out their space helmets. Johnny decides. Johnny decides he's going to flame on and oops. This flame needs air. Nice going, buddy. Fortunately, Raid picked up Johnny and kept him from going back to Earth. And then they lose their gravity, or the gravity. Um, ben is going to be the anchor. And Raid goes up and... And he's having a hard time. And uh, unfortunately, he gets zapped by a rocket blast and is tossed back to the building. So, Reed is out. And unfortunately, they sealed her up. And uh, so, Ray, uh, Ben is going to take out Submariner for getting them into this mess. And they fight. And then Dr. Doom is saying he's going to toss the building into the sun. And let's take another commercial. All right. Okay. All right, let's see. <laughs> the goddess says, does Sue have her hands on Namor's naked chest? Scandalous. Rubber Reed restrains Rocky. Happens a lot, John. Darf says, darn women. 
Bantam says, hey, she's sending Reed a signal. That signal is Reed. That signal is Reed. The fish guy is putting moves on me, so you better make your intentions clear. He is smart after all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Magic chest. I'm going to just leave that one right here. Yeah, okay. The magic chest, a.k.a. Sydney Sweeney. Okay. Reed Rubber beats Ben Rock, who can beat Johnny. Then who beats Reed? Paper Rubber. Is that how the family dynamics works? Never thought about that. Never thought about that, Wayne. We got us? Darth, you can never trust Dr. Doom. The old double cross. Dr. Classic Doom, yep. Uh, yeah, that Darth, that is a good one. Clap on, clap off, flame on, flame off. <laughs> FK, uh, Tim says it could be worse. He could flame on in a pure oxygen environment. Oh boy, too bad the fastball special has not been invented. True. Rocky again. Also, that idea was odd. Doom doesn't... Doom usually doesn't waste things. If he took them to space, wait for them to expire, then raid all of Ray's inventions. True. But, remember, Doom, Doom is a narcissist. He thinks he's better than Reed. So, Reed probably doesn't have anything that's worth his interest. John says, got to run. See you Saturday. Well, take care, John. See you Saturday. All right, back we go. All right, so there's the muscles, and there's grit again. Yeah. Let's see the fan page. Ooh, some people do not like. Some people do not like uh, how they treated Namor. Dear editor, I just finished off FF4, and your treatment of Submariner was just terrible. Namor's kingdom has been destroyed. And if you put himself yourself in his place, you'd feel the same way he did. If anything, you should have had the FF make up to him for all the wrong things precipitated against him instead of making him out to be a human monster. I bet you don't print this. Uh, it doesn't take much courage to print the letter, Marlene. Doesn't that sound a little prophetic? Uh, 60 years, 60 years ago, hmm, wokeness is starting to emerge, even 60 years ago. Um, and then they had, in issue four of the Fantastic Four, we announced a $5 prize for the reading, for the reader, sending in the best explanation for the individual, indiv the invisible girl's disappearing gem. We... We we received so many correct answers, all well written and carefully thought out, that I, uh, the only thing was to award the five dollars to the fan sending in the letter which we received first. The winner is Jonathan Latham. His answer is, is it's not Susan Storm who disappeared, but one of the scrawls impersonating her by shrinking in size. The gem vanished by carry, being carried unseen by the minute, minute size scroll. Mm, okay. And then more goodies, more stamp by mail stuff. Enlarged, enlargement photos only for a buck. Magic water pistol for 95 cents that you can't get anywhere in any, this time of year. I mean, this century. New pocket size invention helps 
hypnotize yourself or others in minutes. Must work or money back. And here we go. Ben's over there. Ben is depressed. And, and Namor has an idea. So they go into a water tank, which they just happen to have. Plot armor. So Namor is starting to get stronger. And... He's taken, I've taken tremendous leaps out of the ocean further than any porpoise. Why should I not be able to do now? So, he, he starts, uh, he starts jumping over meteors, bouncing over, and he catches the airplane. And then, Mag he's magnetized. Uh, so he decides to use his muscles to breach the hull. He gets in and he's going to... He gets in, tries to get into the pilot's cabinet, cabin, and he is shot. And... And he is all, he, Doom is sure that Submariner is, is dead. And now he's going to break the contact with the building so it goes into the sun. But then, so what happened, he, Namor, absorbed the electricity and blasts Doom. Doom goes through an escape hatch, escape hatch. He gets caught on a meteor and then heads out into who knows where. For eternity is a long, long time. And Dr. Doom, who has coveted all the Earth, now has eternity to scheme in a not much larger domain, the universe himself. It's a and then the ship lowers the Baxter building for the first time, but not the last time, back to their spot. And uh, and then they... And Ben is over there saying, do I want to shake his hand or smash him? Uh, Sue is... Um, Sue is empathizing. Sue is empathizing with Submariner. And uh, Johnny found the device. And Ben can't... Ben can't move it. And Reed says, Dr. Doom was an evil genius, but a genius nevertheless. What a tragedy that his great mental abilities produce such miracles for sinister purpose. And wonders about Submariner. And the device gets detached, heads out to the ocean, and causes the, the jet to crash. Um, and uh, Submariner goes back into the water saying, this is where I belong the sea which is my home and that is the end of issue 5 but we got some more ads you can collect stamps for, for 2 bucks plus COD you can learn to dance in an hour with foot checks and we don't have sea monkeys, but we've got seahorses. Order one mated pair of dwarf species living seahorses. Send airmail from Florida for $3.50 postage. 
paid. They have food and instructions free. So there's your no sea monkeys, but we got the seahorses. And more ads. Oh, a musical box. You can have sea behind glasses so you don't get snuck up on. <laughs> Crazy cracks. Apply this to the television screen, and it appears that the glass is cracked. A bike speedometer for 75 cents. A space phone. 69 cents. Whoa. And, of course, the Muscle Man. They sure want to show you. A... I wonder how many, I mean, figure, you've got kids and teenagers looking at this. And I wonder how many people actually thought they can become muscles like this. And then, of course, you can sell Christmas cards. All right, so that is... That is tonight's tonight's um, episode of Fantastic Four reviews. And hello, Max Redstone. All right, let's head. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Darf says, Doom becomes a god, I think, in the future. Yeah. As I don't think most of you collect modern comics, but the letter to, letters to the editor's section has been removed a long time ago. I can't recall seeing them in a long time. Remember, some of the people might remember when Namor fought a lion cap in the Android Torch during World War II. Hello, Max Redstone. I'm just stopping in to say hello. By the way, I'm sure that if the inclusion crowd got their way, 100% of the time we'd have the Fantastic 45 instead. Oh. Okay. Uh... Sandra says, yeah, you're probably right. Okay. But it's a long way to Tipperary. Phantom Outsider. Here, I will show you where I got these. Let's see. Forty-four years of the Fantastic Four. I bought it in the, I bought it around 2005. Got that. And then you've got this beautiful picture from Perez. So now these, these are not downloaded from Kindle. As Sandra said, I think they were from Kindle. And download it. Nope, they're a DVD. <laughs> Maybe comics from on HD DVD. No, this is just D, you know, first format DVD. Uh, comics on Betamax and Laserdisc. Huh. Yep, I remember the ring that would zip you and the switch blade cone. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. All right, so that is issues five and six of the Fantastic Four. Um, before I go to show notes, the, tell me, guys, um, what do you think of these two these two issues? Uh, I um, I don't think I could put a poll. I don't think I could put it. Maybe next time, instead of the tip jar, I'll do a poll. But. Um, how would you rate? I'm going to just call them a two parter because uh, how would you rate issues five and six? I, I, I would give them, I would definitely give them an A. 
It's, it's the first time we see Dr. Doom, and you can see his devilish machinations as he tries to uh, manipulate um, Submariner. Snort, you really want me to... Re oh. They seemed a bit wet to me. Oh. Snorty, snorty, snorty. Uh, sigh, snorty, snorty. Um, I think that's worthy of a kitty table if it was open. But it's not. It's not, so you'll have to wait till... Yes, you should hang your snoot. Especially since the kitty table is closed for the day. So, um, all right. So, no, if there are no comments, no grades for the two issues here. <laughs> Snora Poopus is on a new diet. From here on out, he hunts prey that makes its own gravy. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm, that's an interesting one. All right. So I think on that note, I will we'll do show notes. Hey everybody, show notes. Um, as Sandra says, pop culture breakdown in half an hour. Make sure if you're gonna go there that you say pod raid. Hashtag pod raid. Um Snorta Pupa says Take care of a human dolphin doggo, ferret, eagle, hedgehog, and white margin star stargazer. Okay. I'll have to look that one up uh store okay so show notes if i can open it all right this saturday is going to be a saturday just because uh we will have the usual maniac the usual characters the slap shot and Kitty table will be open. Pudgy will be here. And uh, we will have Snort will be here. And the uh, panel will be here. And just everybody will have a great time. On the 27th, I don't know what we're going to do yet. We'll figure it out. We will probably do either a Surfside chat or a podcast. Um, on the 30th, the Easter Eve, I thought, let's make it a candy day. Let's talk about candy, since Easter has is, since Easter, you get candy on Easter. So we're going to have candy day. On April 17th, we're going to have um, Stephanie Janicek, uh return uh, so we will um have her and hopefully we'll have more interviews between now and the 17th so please help me out. help a dolphin out help a dolphin out and uh we'll we'll have fun um Gata says what that bid only a minute long on how to remove that heart uh the thing about it is is uh i'm going to click on it 
And see, I don't use Studio. Yes, that's true. That's true, Max Redstone. Uh, and we will be celebrating Purim with the rest of my shul, and we'll be having festivities. I'm not sure what costume I'm going to wear. I am not sure. So if I rob a bank in the next 25 minutes, can I say pod raid? Oh, uh, you can make so you can make you can say pod raid anyway, Max. And yes, yeah, she got volunteered to make call off for the first one. Uh, she's gonna do a great job. Cooking with Sandra is always awesome. It is awesome. Yes. So Purim is this weekend. Next weekend is Easter. All right. So let me close out show notes. All right, so that is show notes, and this was FF Reviews. So let me thank uh, everybody who was here and wish everybody a great evening. We had, we had Darth. Thank you for being here, Darth. Um, we had FKHC 2005. Thank you for being here, Tim. We had Max Redstone. Thank you, sir. And he says, I'm a pseudo stormtrooper. He's going to be a pseudo stormtrooper. I have the much, I have the helmet, not much else yet. I've got to start. I've got a DS9 costume that I can probably wear. We've got, we had Phantom Outsider. You know, I could also go as a polar bear. I don't know how I could pull that off, but I think I could. And thank you, Sci Fi Mombi. Thank you for being here, dear. Thank you, Matt G, alias. Uh, T.S. greater than Disney. All right. And now, my amazing wrench team. Sandra, the zookeeper. Queen Dolphin. Uh, the person who brings order out of chaos. Love you, honey. We had John Rendell, co-co-host. We had... The first one in, the last one out, leg out is Legion I. Thank you, my friend, Troublemaker. We had Antiderivative Jill, the amazing Antiderivative Jill. Check out her, her channel and her Star Trek reviews. We had Pudgy Hedgehog. <laughs> she, uh, we had Pudgy Hedgehog. And we had the Comic Relief Crusader. And finally, the bear. The myth. The bear, the myth, the legend. Slaughter Poopas! Q Blair. Dot Scream. Hashtag Roar. Rawr. Great show. Great reviews. Yeah, I could see Snort as the thing. He'd be cool as the thing. It's clobbering time. But I get to be Johnny. I get to be the Human Torch. Actually, no, I want to be Richards. I'm rubber. Yeah, I'm rubber. Yeah, that'll work. Good night, Snort. Night, everybody else. Have a great show, and see you Saturday. All right. And Max Redstone says, I dare say that if Laura Brannigan was alive today, she'd be quaking in her leather pants 
at the possibility of having to do a sing-off with Pudgy. Oh, yeah. That's true. That is so true. All right, everybody. Well, I think I got everybody. I got the Comic Relief Crusader. I got everybody who was guesting. I don't think I missed anybody. We got Phantom Outsider. And uh, we will we will see you. Remember, Friday Night Frolics will be on Friday night. Um, Imagine how that works. Huh? Imagine how that works. Yeah. Um, and we will have Just Cause on Saturday. Thank you all. Love you guys. You are the best. You have yourself a great rest of the week.